Hello, and welcome back to another tutorial on Sol. Today, we're going to take a look at data structures and arrays, and we're going to do that by implementing a simple delay. Now, in the last videos, we sort of introduced our bread and butter components, so we know how to write a processor, how to uh, do operations on streams, uh, we know about graphs, where we can structure processes, where we can split them, merge them, run them in parallel or in series, and um, Finally, we also know about parameters, how to use streams, how to use events, how to, how to fetch event changes, and so on and so forth. And we know annotations where we can communicate um, a, certain, a certain event or a certain stream to, to the host that will set up everything accordingly for us. This is all great stuff, but the problem is that this doesn't get us too far when it comes to signal processing, because when we wrote that gain operation earlier, um, we basically said that we can do operations on streams. So we can multiply them with a number, we can add them together, but we only know what's going on at the current sample that we are processing. But for any type of slightly more sophisticated processing, we of course need to know what the state of previous samples were. So we need to know how to store previous samples in data structure, and we need to index these to, to access the actual samples. And when we access them, we, of course, need to make sure that the index is not outside of the bounds of the data structure, in this case, an array. Um, so this is what we're going to solve today. We're going to write a processor that takes in an audio input and spits out the same signal and the delayed version of the same signal. And what I mean by delayed version is just the previous sample that we stored somewhere. Um, so I have a simple setup right here. If you don't, if you're not familiar with this, then I highly recommend you check out the previous videos. But this is very, very basic. So we have um, we have our top level graph, and we have an instance of our delay. And what this delay is doing right now is just passing things through. And if we compile it, then it all works well. We can look at our audio graph, and we can see that we have one audio input, one audio input, and in our delay that just passes through into the output of our top level graph. So that's the setup that we have right now. And well, we can go ahead now and we can start populating this and turn this into an actual delay. This is gonna be very, very basic. It's not gonna have any controls whatsoever. This is only for the sake of demonstrating how you can how you can store samples in a, in a data structure, in this case, uh, an array. So the first thing that we need for our delay is we need, um, for our delay processor, is we're going to need a couple of member variables. And um, the first thing that we need, of course, is the, the array itself. And an array, um, as you might might have seen it in other C style languages, um, an array is basically declared uh, using the square bracket notation. So we have these square brackets, and we can call it buffer because that's what I want to do. I want to store, I want to buffer samples so that I can access them whenever I need to. And then whatever comes in here into these square brackets, it just determines uh, the length of our array. So uh, we can pass in like a literal number. We can say that we want a thousand, hundred thousand registers um, that constitute our buffer. We can also make a member variable beforehand. So we can say something like const int buffer length is equal to a hundred thousand. And what we can then go ahead and do is we can say, okay, we want this to be of size of our buffer length. This is another way to do it. What we could also do, and this is actually my preferred way, the way I would like to do it, is we can say we want a parameter list in this delay where we can say something like const int buffer length. And in our top level graph, we can just populate this parameter list right here. So we can say we want 100,000 upon initialization. So this is a very, very neat little uh, syntax that's very, very useful. So where you can say, okay, whenever whenever I make a new delay processor inside of my graph, uh, I can populate it here and I can pass some initial values to it. So that's very, very useful. And while we're at it, we can also go ahead and have another parameter in our parameter list um, where we can say, okay, how many samples do we want our signal to be delayed? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say const int delay in samples because it is going to be in samples. We're not going to use any musical units yet. And we can go ahead and do the same thing. 
in our top level graph right here where you can just say, okay, I want my signal to be delayed by 10,000 samples. That's an arbitrary number that I made up just for the sake of demonstration. So now you also know about these parameter lists that sort of work like a constructor uh, where you can say, okay, whenever I make a new instance of my delay or whatever processor you have, I want this to be the initial values and I can, you can populate them in the graph right here. So um, that's a very, very neat little trick for initializing processes. The next component we need are indexing variables. So we need to be able to access elements within our buffer. And whenever we want to access elements inside our buffer, we of course need to make sure that the index itself is inside of the bounds of the array. So we need some sort of checking that whenever we increment an index, we need to make sure that it's inside of the bounds of the array. So one thing that we could do in our run function is whenever we increment an index, we want to check, is it still inside of the bounds of the array? And if it's not, then we want to just wrap it around and start from the first sample again. Um, that is, of course, one valid approach, but you will need to do this bounce checking uh, a lot of the times. And so what Sol has is, is it has some nifty little types that basically do the job for you. So we can declare these indices as our wrap type. It's this wrap type. And inside of these angular brackets, it's going to need the, the bounds that it's actually checking for underneath. And in this case, it's going to be our buffer length that we pass right here. And I'm just going to call one of these indices right index, and the other one is going to, call, going to be called read index, like this. And what we're basically saying here is, we treat this variable just like a regular integer variable, but whenever we increment it and the value is greater than the one we specified in the angular brackets, it just wraps around and becomes zero again. And I think this is a huge quality of life functionality. So you will need to do bounce checking all of the time. So I think it's only logical that this is one of the core components. And I would highly encourage you to, to use them. And then finally, all we have to do is we have to put everything together in our run function. And this means we have to store the incoming sample in our array. So we have to write to it. We have to use our write index. And, and in the same way that you might know it from other languages, we can access uh, elements of an array, again, using this, this square bracket notation. So we can say our buffer array at our write index position is equal to our audience. So we write to our buffer. The next thing we need to do is we need to spit out the incoming signal plus our delayed signal. So this is where we can use our ind read index variable. So what we need to flush out again is the buffer at our read index. Plus whatever is coming in. And since we're adding two samples here, it would of course make sense to, to divide them by two to avoid any sort of clipping. Like this. Hello, this is Future Daniel speaking from the editing session. I made a small little mistake because we're not dividing by two as a float variable, but this is an integer right now. Uh, it will be corrected later in the edit, but uh, it's not going to be commented. So don't be bumped out by this. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Back to past Daniel. And what we need to do then is we need to increment our indices. So what we can go ahead and do is we can say write index plus plus, which is the short notation for um, incrementing the write index by one. And the read index, of course, needs to lag, needs to read a previous sample. So we can say is the read index is equal to the write index minus our delay in samples that we specified above, just like this. So as of now, we would be getting a compiler error because we're basically trying to subtract an integer variable from this write index, which is of type wrap. So what we need to do is we need to cast this expression, this entire expression. And the cast looks slightly different from the C style cast that you might be used to from C style languages. It looks like this. So we need to first declare the type that we want to cast to. And this is again going to be of type wrap. It's going to wrap around our buffer length. And then this goes into these parentheses right here. So all of this expression, the entire expression gets cast into this, this wrap type. And if we go ahead and compile this and run and play some audio through it,
then we actually have a delay. This is great. We've done it. And if we bypass this, then we can see that this delay is actually doing what it's supposed to. So this, of course, is very, very basic and, to be frank, a bit scrappy. Um, a fixed delay isn't really that helpful, but I hope you get a good understanding and a starting point to make this process a bit more interesting. So you could introduce feedback, you can implement dry-wet mixing, you can train the delay time into a user parameter. Uh, the delay time is currently in samples, which of course isn't a very musical unit, so you can add conversions to milliseconds or BPM or something, so you can get creative with it. And by now you know all about graphs and processes, you know about streams, events, and you learned about arrays, indices, and accessing previously processed samples. You know about these wrap types that are very, very useful whenever you need to access elements of an array, um, which you want to do all the time. So that's great. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, take care and stay safe.